Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and today I want to give you an overview of the Maruman Nemosign line of notebooks. This is something that's relatively hard to find in the US. It's a new notebook brand, well, new to us anyway, here at GouletPens.com that we've recently gotten. Maruman is the name of the company, and then Nemosign is the name of the notebook line, if you will. So Maruman makes several different notebooks line, notebook lines, and Nemosign is this particular line. Now, if you have heard of Nemosign, the pen brand before, it's spelled differently, and it has absolutely nothing to do with this company whatsoever. So that's a little bit confusing, I realize, but that's a question I've already been getting, so I wanted to clear that up kind of right off the bat. And Maruman, the company, comes from Japan. All of the notebooks they made on Japan on the front of them. So um, we're going to cover some details here in this video. I'm going to try and give you as much of an idea as I can in this overview. And um, last thing I wanted to cover here in the intro is that Nemesign is the ancient Greek term for the goddess of memory. So uh, all of the notebooks kind of have a theme of like memo notebooks and to-do list styles in them. So they're kind of interesting in that way. So let's go over some details that we can cover that kind of go over all of the different styles of notebooks because there are little details that are different here and there, but some that are kind of broad and cover the whole line. First of all, they're all wire bound. Now, Maruman does make some Nemesign notebooks that are not wire bound. They're more hard bound and things like that, but all the ones we're carrying at GouletPens.com are wire bound, these nice, sturdy double wires that are black in color. If you look at the covers of all the notebooks, they have these numbers next to the Nemesign name. And these are kind of meaningless, I guess, in terms of measurement, paperweight, and stuff like that, but what they do help you do is to tell the difference between the different styles of notebooks. It's the product code for the Nemesign notebooks. So when I refer to a certain number, that's how you can tell which one that I'm talking about. The covers are also identical on all of the notebooks. It's very thin black cover. It's got a slight bit of texture to it and it's very flexible as well. So when you're handling it, it's gonna be very durable, um, you know, water resistant, liquid resistant, and all that good stuff, at least on the cover. Not the paper itself, but the cover will be. So all of the notebooks in the Nemesign line use the same paper, with the exception of the word cards. They're kind of like their own thing. It's a thicker kind of cardstock paper. But all the ones in the wirebound notebooks use the same 80 gram uh, slightly off-white paper, which if you're familiar with Rhodia paper, it's a very similar kind of weight and feel to that Rhodia paper. Uh, it's just a little bit more of a cream color than that bright kind of white Rhodia paper. The paper in all the notebooks is also perforated, which is kind of nice. I mean, granted, it's a wire bound, so you could always just tear it out if you're just trying to remove it. But if you want to have a nice clean edge to it, it is perforated so you can get that nice edge. All of the ruling is this uh, kind of faint gray color. So I know that can really matter for some of you. Um, so just uh, so you know that it's consistent across all of the notebooks. Some of the notebooks have graph paper. And one thing that's kind of interesting, I've never really seen another paper company do this, uh, but all the, the Nemesign notebooks that have graph paper, it's graph on the front and blank on the back, which is kind of interesting. So you're kind of getting a little bit of a two for one uh, on that paper. Now there are a lot of other technical details that I'm gonna try to cover as thoroughly as I realistically can in one video, but there's a lot of things with this notebook line where it's like 80% of them have one characteristic except a couple of the notebooks are just a little bit different. So you're gonna to wanna to check the technical specs tab on the individual product pages for these notebooks on GouletPens.com for specific details about individual notebooks. All right, so let's get into it here. There's several different kind of groupings of these products. And the first one that I'm gonna cover is uh, what's called the creative style. So these are um, landscape top wire bound notebooks that are, uh, well, they're I think meant to be used more for kind of sketching and drawing. Um, so there's two different sizes. There's an A4 size and an A5 size. The A4 size they call the imagination and then the A5 size they call the inspiration. So let's take a look at the A4 size first. So this is um, you know, gonna be the larger size and there are two different ones. There's a blank one and a graph one, a five millimeter graph. And um, these stickers here on the front, these are very easily removable. In fact, that's one thing I really like about it. Um, and these are both 70 sheet, uh, sheet count on these. And uh, to correspond here, I've got numbers 181 and 180. So if I look at 181, this is the blank one. 
So if I open it up first, it's got a um, yellow, bright yellow sheet on here, and it's got some little instructions in the back here, which are, you know, in Japanese, but they have little pictures there, so you kind of get the idea. It's used for inspiration and meetings and notes and yada, yada, yada. Um, but if you actually look at the paper itself, the way that it's laid out, it's got the perforation right here at the top, just beneath the wire binding, and then the line right here, if you go up at the top, it's got a room for a title, and then it's got a date and number here over in the corner. And then the whole rest of the sheet is blank. And then if you flip it over on the back, it doesn't have a title or date or anything like that. It's just purely blank on the back. And it's the same thing. There's no numbers or anything. There's no brand name or anything like that to worry about. It's just 70 sheets of this. And then it's got a relatively thick cardboard binding on the back. And then if you look at the number 180, this is the graph version of the same notebook. So the size and everything is gonna be exactly the same. Um, the only difference is going to be that it's got graph paper instead of the blank one. So the graph one still has the room for the title and the date up at the top. It's got a very, very subtle kind of gray uh, lines to it, which that's one thing that really kind of drives me crazy about some graph paper is the graph lines can be so bright and prominent that it really competes with whatever it is that you're writing on there. But that's not the case with this one. So I really kind of like it for that. And then interesting, interestingly enough on the back, it's blank. So I've really never seen that before, having a blank on one side and graph on the other. So it's kind of interesting. And it's just 70 sheets of that. Then getting into the A5 size, you've really kind of got the same thing. So I won't go through all the dirty details, but basically you open it up and it's got the same kind of situation going over here. The main difference between this and the um, A4 size, other than the size, of course, is that there's no spot for, um, uh, for a date or anything like that. So it's just got room for a title at the top and then it has a line and then you kind of get into it. And the same thing on the graph one, same kind of situation. It's got a spot for a title number, still perforated, and then it's got your graph lines with your blank on the back. And the prices on these range the um, uh, little bits. Obviously, the smaller ones are cheaper at $7.40. The larger ones are $13. Next one I wanna look at here, this is called the basic style. And I'm gonna call these ones the notebooks, as opposed to notepads, which I generally consider to be kind of top bound, but the notebooks are the side bound. So these are the side wire bound nemesines. And um, I've got the smallest one here, which is an A6 size. I'm gonna set this one aside because we're gonna get back to that one. That one's different than the other ones here. So we'll cover kind of the ones that are all the same and then cover that one separately. Um, but the other ones here, there's three different sizes. And it gets a little crazy here because you get into A sizes and B sizes. So check the gouletpens.com for the specific measurements for each of these because my head is just about spinning trying to remember all of this different data about all these different notebooks. Um, so you'll just have to forgive me if I don't remember specific inches and centimeters and that kind of thing. But anyway, um, so there's some common kind of things throughout these. The layout is actually the same on these notebooks. Um, it's all seven millimeter lined ruling. What's kind of cool about this is the layout. And I've actually been using, using this as kind of a, it's kind of like a meeting notebook. Um, you could use it as kind of a calendar or, or you know, like a meeting notebook for just uh, different things that you've got going on. So it's got a date at the top on the left side. It's got a room for a title. And then it's lined, but it's, uh, it's got some of the lines are more prominent than others. So it's kind of broken into, to, I guess, three different sections. So it's got these kind of small dotted lines that go across and then a more prominent solid line that breaks it up into thirds. So I think that's kind of interesting. That really helps me to kind of section off whether I want to use it for different times of the day or whether I am in a meeting and I have different thoughts, notes on something somebody else is saying, thoughts for my own questions. You know, I can kind of break it out like that. And it's the same on the front and the back. Um, it's also micro perforated, just like all the other ones. So that's, that's really kind of handy. And um, it's the same format for the larger sizes as well, even the largest size. The number of lines are gonna be different on the larger notebooks because they're all seven millimeters and obviously when there's more lines, you're gonna have more lines per page and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, actually now I'm noticing that the line is uh, actually in, broken into four sections on the largest one. So even that's a detail that I literally just noticed right now. So lots of fine details on this notebook brand, but um, it's all still the, the same line width on all of these different notebooks that we have going on.
Now let's cover the other one, the smallest one. This is the A6 size, and this is uh, what's referred to as the Memo notebook. So it's a little bit different on this one. It's still seven millimeter line ruling, um, but the difference is it only has a date at the top, and then it has actually kind of a double margin going on, so it acts as kind of uh, check boxes. So if you want to use something as a small to-do list, this one is really handy for that. And then for whatever reason, the back of these sheets are blank, kind of like the graph one is. So this notebook is a little bit different than the other one uh, in terms of its line formatting. But that right there covers the basic side wire bound style. And these ones range in price from about $5 to $13. All right, now we've got the top wire bound, which I'm gonna call the note pads. These ones, there's a little bit of difference between them, um, but these are uh, nice, small, really portable. These are like steno style pads here. So the smallest one is a five millimeter ruling, um, but it is still lined. And then you got the middle size, which is also five millimeter. And then the largest one is a seven millimeter. So the largest one is actually an uh, B6 size, the middle one is a B7 size, and the smallest one is an A7 size. So the sizes are kind of weird, you know, again, check the website for specific dimensions. But the largest one, the format is going to be very similar to what you have on the side wire bound. It's got the date and title at the top, and then it's got all your line ruling in a 7 millimeter with the three kind of lines that break it up. The smaller ones, um, the line is, the, the, for whatever color, the, for whatever reason, the color is a little bit more prominence just on these two. I um, mean, it doesn't have any title or date or anything like that. So it's just purely lines on the page and they're five millimeters. So it's gonna be the same line width that you would have on a graph or a dot grid if you're used to that at all, except it's just regular lined. And all of these notebooks have 50 sheets in them. And because they're slightly less paper and slightly smaller notebooks, the price range on these ones is anywhere between two and four. All right, so the last thing I want to cover here is the word cards. Now, these are really kind of different than everything else. And actually, this is one of the coolest things about what Maruman has made because it's these A7 size cards, which are perfect sizes for doing ink swabs. If you want to have your own method for kind of doing ink swabs, especially if you're an ink drop member or something like that, you get a lot of ink samples which I know, you know, not many of you have out there, but uh, it's got this ring that you can break apart so you can reorganize them however you want. So whenever you get a new ink or pen or whatever, you can write out your own little sample on these cards and then you can organize them however you want to. It's really cool. You get a hundred sheets of this for $4. So it's very reasonably priced. It's super utilitarian and I just absolutely love it. The paper is slightly textured, so it's a little bit different. It's kind of more like a a watercolor paper almost. Um, so it's different than what's in all the notebooks and different one than what probably what's in most of your um, in notebooks that you're used to. So if you can get past the texture a little bit, um, you know, that's just something you'll have to get used to. But at the same time, the paper's thicker too. It's a little bit more like a cardstock. So when you're doing ink swabs and stuff like that, it'll be able to hold up a little bit better. All right, so now let's talk about the paper performance because that's obviously very important if you're using fountain pens like probably most of you are. So um, uh, I mentioned earlier how it's very similar to Rhodia, and that's definitely the case. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of feedback to it, so it's not quite as smooth as a Clairefontaine, especially like a Clairefontaine Triumph or a Rhodia Premium. But if you're um, using the 80 gram Rhodia, the conventional Rhodia, it's gonna be feel very, very similar to that, uh, both in the weight and in the feel of your nib. So I did some writing samples here with lots of different pens. I just kind of had whatever pen and ink combination that we had inked up around the office here. So I got lots of different ones for you. And I found that in general, it performs really well. So I have some like the uh, Pilot Custom 912 stub with Jerobon Emerald of Shavor, which as of this shooting is not even available yet. So uh, that should get you pretty excited. Um, but I got really good shading on that one. You can, get, you can see all the sheen and everything on it. Um, so that's really cool. Um, I got some other ones in here, some fine ones, some roller ball. I even did a Sharpie. Um, what I did notice though, is that on some of the really wet ones, like I've got a Premier uh, with a broad name and detriment as Apple Blossom, which is this gusher that my wife likes to use for some reason. I did get some feathering on this one. Um, and I got a little bit of feathering on some of the heaviest spots, like on my 580 Broad with Magenta Violet from Diatramentis there, got some there. But in general, I got some good shading on here, not quite as much as I would on Rhodia. It's not quite as ink resistant. So there's a little bit of a sacrifice in some of the shading, um, but at the same time, it dries a little bit faster. So it's kind of a somewhat of a trade-off, but it's very subtle. 
And then if I flip it over to the back here, even though I did get some um, feathering with some of these ink combinations, I really didn't get any bleed through on the back. So that was kind of cool, except with that Sharpie. You know, it's literally like one of those fat Sharpies that I used. Um, so that I really kind of expected because it's a solvent-based marker, blah, blah, blah. It's very different. Um, but with all the fountain pen ink, even when I laid it on really thick, I just, there were some spots where it barely started to um, show a little bit on the opposite side. But it'll pretty much take just about whatever you put on it. Even though it's only 80 gram, it's not the thickest paper that's out there, but it holds up really well. So I mentioned something about the dry time. So I tested it, you know, really just specifically to the Rhodia. This isn't a super thorough scientific test or anything like that, but um, I have a dot pad here and then I have the uh, Nemesign 80 gram. So I used the same Pilot Custom 74 with a fine nib and Aurora Black because it's what I had inked up in there. And doing a dry time, I found that it was just a little bit faster. It wasn't like life changing or anything like that, but maybe on certain pen and ink combinations, it might be a little bit a little bit better dry time than Rhodia, but in general, I would say this, this uh, paper is very comparable in performance to Rhodia. All right, so there we go. That is Nemesign in one shot. I know this is a long video. Thanks for sticking there with me. Hopefully I covered all the details correctly. This was definitely a lot to try to put together. So if you are questioning any of the legitimacy of these details, be sure to ask in the comments on YouTube or on the blog, or check the website in our technical specs tab on any individual product pages. Be sure to check them out on gouletpens.com if you're interested in purchasing them at all, of course. And if you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and right on.